and by and the use of sirens by unauthorized vehicles has been strictly forbidden to ensure a calm environment for voters. The IGP also mandated that special attention be given to individuals with disabilities, pregnant women, nursing mothers, the aged, and those with mobility challenges. The IGP equally reaffirms the dedication of the Nigeria Police Force to promoting a safe and democratic environment while calling for collaborative efforts with citizens. All is now set for tomorrow's governorship election in Edo State, and more than 2 million registered voters in the state are expected to participate in the process. We have a breakdown of this in our next report. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, puts the total number of registered voters in Edo State at 2,629,025. Even though this is about 19% higher than the number of registered voters four years ago for Edo 2020, only a maximum of 2,249,780 are expected to vote on Saturday across the state. This represents 85% of the total number of registered voters. Elections are to hold this Saturday in 18 local government areas of the state and 192 wards. With 400,495 people, Igbo Baoha local government has the highest number of registered voters, while Igbo Eben LG has the lowest number of 54,549. After inspection and inventory at the Central Bank Office in Benin City in the presence of party officials and the media, INEC on Thursday moved all sensitive and non-sensitive materials to the allocation across the state, accompanied by security agents to the satisfaction of the parties. So far, so good. We've also been carried along. We were there, we saw where they opened uh, the, the, the parking lot, all of that. So, yes, the, uh, it's fine, and uh, the process is, 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 is fair enough. This set of materials moved to far flung places like Akokue to LG. And for the Electoral Commission, this is the first step to a credible election of a new governor of Edo State this Saturday. They were here, and so far, no complaints. I don't know what they will react after that, but before us, they didn't complain. If they had complained, we would have addressed the issue. But so far, they've not done that. There are other places which present logistical challenge to the commission due to bad road and waterways. Yes, we have a contingency plan for that. Any place we cannot access, we have, um, we have the contingency plan. We will assess it by either uh, bike, if there are riverine areas, the boats have been provided for them. For election monitoring group Yaga Africa, Edo State Governorship Election 2024 is a barometer for measuring Nigeria's commitment to representative democracy, which reflects the true will of the people. Eighteen political parties are fielding candidates in this election, and just one of them is fielding a woman for the job of the governor of Edo State. Salomon Ajizogu, TVC News, Benin City. Away from Africa to the Middle East, where Gaza's civil defense says 12 Palestinians have been killed in two Israeli attacks on Gaza City. This comes as Israel and Hezbollah trade cross-border fire as people in Lebanon abandon electronic devices after explosions killed 37 persons. We have details in this report. Reports say one person has been killed in an Israeli air raid on Beit Hanun. This comes as northern Gaza has been under relentless attack from Israeli forces. On Thursday, six people from the same family were killed in one attack when Israeli forces bombed a home in Jabalia. 
Three children were also wounded. At least two Palestinians have also been wounded after Israeli forces shot Gaza City's Zaytun neighborhood after waging an earlier assault attack on his Daraj neighborhood. Meanwhile, reports have revealed that following the events this week, there are indications that the major front of the war is moving from Gaza to the border with Lebanon. This comes as videos from Israeli government media sources show the destruction of their own minefields on the border. Hezbollah's Secretary General spoke yesterday about the part of this confrontation. Israel, according to Hezbollah's Secretary General, wants to link the southern Lebanon frontier to Gaza. So Israel is now dealing with the Lebanese front as a priority, and we are seeing a demonstration of this escalation. This comes as Thursday strikes in southern Lebanon were described as perhaps the most intense since the start of the war. For now, there have been no reports of deaths, but there have been reports of injuries with reports revealing that Israel is said to have mainly targeted Hezbollah launches. Another report indicates that the Israel military is taking advantage of the distraction it has caused in Lebanon to carry out more deadly attacks in the Gaza Strip, including two separate attacks in Nusirat that targeted apartments and residential buildings. This is a repeat of the scenario for the past couple of months where displaced families taking shelter are attacked together with their children. Reacting to the series of attacks, Norway's foreign minister is calling for calm as Israel and Hezbollah spiral deeper into conflicts, warning the Middle East is on the brink. As the war in the Israel-Hamas war continues, the International Rescue Committee warns that escalating violence in the occupied West Bank threatens to collapse the health system as humanitarian organizations suspend their activities. The IRC revealed that the West Bank is facing the worst violence since the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs began keeping records in 2005. The organization, however, warned that Israel must uphold its obligations to ensure immediate and active protection of civilians and health care services in the West Bank. Now to our coverage of the Russia-Ukraine war. As the war continues, Russian officials have continued to deliver strong statements about how Moscow would respond to Western weapons striking deep inside its territory and whether such attacks will happen at all. Meanwhile, Russians hit a five-story building of a geriatric boarding house in Sumy with the technical and the fifth floors partially destroyed. Reports say one person was killed, while 13 other persons were injured. Rescuers have now completed work at the site of the airstrike, with 147 persons evacuated from the building. Away from that, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is in Kiev to discuss European support, winter preparedness, defense, and the progress of G7 loans. This visit comes after she announced that over $160 million from the proceeds of frozen Russian assets would now be allocated to address Ukraine's urgent humanitarian needs this winter. heartbreaking to see the destruction and the devastation uh, through the floods. The most pressing question is, can we help with um, funding to repair and reconstruct? No co-financing. Um, these are extraordinary times and extraordinary times need extraordinary measures. 10 billion euros are possible um, to mobilize from the cohesion funds for the countries that are affected. Um, this is an emergency reaction now.